Hello, Joe Simhart here again for another installment of Cults in the Occult Culture. It's um, Sunday, January 30th, uh, 2022. And I'm going to try to tackle something which uh, might be too much for a short video, but I'm going to give it a go. I was listening to lectures again by um, William R. Cook, a professor of religions, and he does a history of the Catholic Church for the Great Courses series, and uh, the lectures are quite good. It's very fair. He looks at the church's history, warts and all, good, bad, and indifferent. One of the things that he brought up um, in the middle of these lectures was this um, divide or uh, tendency to divide between the Augustinian approach to religion and Thomas Aquinas's uh, uh, scholastic approach to religion. Now, in Augustine, um, what what happens is that the, the religion boils down to faith, to believing, although reason is involved. Um, and in the Thomas Aquinas version that uh, uses Aristotle as a basis for argument, uh, we find reason as um, a means of, of trying to explain and understand and then to pursue uh, the religion. So th there's two different tendencies here. And what I find is that, that in our conservative uh, church, we tend toward Augustinian or toward faith and uh, sola scriptura, and uh, salvation by faith, and, and that there's um, something called um, an election by by God. Only God knows who's going to be saved and who isn't. So not everybody in God's mind is worthy of being saved, and he knows this ahead of time. So the way this goes is, uh, according to Augustine, who lived from uh, 354 to 430 AD, um, in this book, uh, The Dictionary of World Religions, which is what I'm referencing here, uh, Augustine was uh, saying that, that God must initiate and affect um, uh, something called loving, that he called loving, whereas we, through our will, uh, initiate believing. And But he says that he insisted that uh, salvation lay entirely in God's hidden election of those to whom God freely gives the gift of love. So this tends toward Gnostic understanding that not everybody is worthy of salvation. Not everybody has this divine spark given by God or grace in Augustine's term uh, to make it back into the heavenly state and that there are some people which can gain it through um, a lot of effort and, and study and, and learn to become like the Gnostic. And then the vast majority of human beings are not going to be saved, according to this uh, conservative form of, of religion. Um, many people don't understand that idea going into cults that, that believe uh, that only the elect are saved, but they learn this once they're in the group and they feel that you have to be in the group to be enlightened, you have to be in the group to be saved, you have to be... Um, uh, a believer in the doctrines of that group in order to know what's really on God's mind or what reality is. So then we turn to uh, Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas lived from uh, 1225 AD until 1274, and he was a Dominican uh, cleric and scholar. And as a uh, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, he uh, helped to incorporate um, Aristotle's ideas and, and bring in uh, classical reasoning into Christian theology. So, moving quickly here, um, I'm going to quote again from this book, The Dictionary of World Religions, and it says that Aquinas was committed to the notion that grace does not destroy nature, but perfects it and that revelation, therefore, does not abrogate achievements of human reason, but simply completes them. 
So there's a different notion of, of how grace operates in the Thomistic uh, idea. It, it works with us through reason, and, and everyone's blessed with reason. And, and in a sense that this world, and we can be perfected through this, uh, the world is good, in other words. In the more conservative view, the world is sinful. Man is entirely sinful. Man cannot do a thing about it. Uh, it has to be up to God to forgive him. Um, and uh, And... Behind all of that, only certain people are destined to be saved. We find this notion being used by a lot of cultic-type religions, as I mentioned before, um, especially ones that we consider fundamentalist, and uh, they tend to emphasize the idea that of, of, of man's uh, sinful nature, and all of that. Okay, so there's some truth on both sides of this. You know, obviously... Reason doesn't answer everything. Uh, human beings make stuff up about reality, and and it works for us. Uh, we have an imagination. We invent gods, and and some of these uh, ideas in our imagination bring us to some kind of cohesion, some kind of uh, uh, social relevance and and cooperation. So. Cultic activity, if you will, or the belief in gods, or the belief in a polis, or the belief in uh, some kind of a, of a, a way of life, even though it can be cannot be demonstrated scientifically, uh, is a good thing because it helps us move forward. Um, and also, we need to reason about things and find out where we're going uh, in terms of: uh, is it possible? Is it really real? Um, is it going to be helpful in the future? And so we can change things, and we call these people progressives that want to progress human uh, reason and, and human evolution and human society uh, and change things as necessary. Conservatives tend not to want to change things that they feel are good, so they hold back. Religion means to bind back, so they become very religious and ideal. Uh, so we have that, that concept which comes from Augustine and Plato, that the ideal world is the best world, the heavenly world is the best world, this world has fallen, this world is sinful, and, and that goes into Neoplatonism and to Neo-Gnosticism, which sees this world as fallen and created by an evil god even. And in the other direction, from Aristotle, we see that this earth is good, um, and that we can reasonably live in it, and we can perfect ourselves, and we can perfect our, our relationship with the environment, and and thus create a kind of a heaven on earth um, if we if we continue to try. But the problem comes in in either direction, whether it's conservative or progressive, whether it's Augustinian or Thomist, um, is in how you get into these frameworks, into these cult-like organizations. Is there deception? You have to ask that. Are we being deceived uh, going in, seeing good things, and then finding out it's not so good once we're in, in the organization? Are we being manipulated to believe in these ideas? Um, we might not feel ma manipulated. We might feel that we're being educated when, in fact, there's a lot of uh, mystical manipulation and kind of uh, human social engineering going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. And then this is the final thing, is are we now locked in to a belief system which won't let us out. Um, condemnation uh, to hell, uh, possible even uh, physical harm if you leave the group. You know, so Robert Lifton called this the uh, dispensing of existence in which he said practically defines what a cult is. You get in and you can't get out um, for whatever reason. So the good side of this, whether it's conservative or progressive, is that when you get in, get involved, it's open and transparent. You know what you're getting into. You can question it. Uh, that it uses an educational approach, not a manipulative approach. You know, some people consider all of education to be manipulative, but but that kind of thinking is uh, uh, wrong-headed, I think, and and really uh, abuses the word education. What that means, which is to draw out, draw out the best in us through some sort of uh, exchange of information. Um, and then a really healthy system has a fair exit process. If it's not working for you, um, for instance, in a, in a, in a marriage, uh, whether it's a marriage of ideas or marriage to a person or a marriage to an organization, 
Uh, if it's not working well, there's a way out. And there's no real heavy condemnation. It doesn't say you're not going to go to heaven if you're not a Catholic or you're not going to go to heaven if you're not an evangelical. Um, you know, or uh, you are a fascist if you don't believe in our political ideology. Uh, you know, that kind of language doesn't exist in a healthy organization, in what you might call a healthy cult, if you will. Uh, so I, I think whether you're following an Augustinian tendency in religion, which is more religious and more idealistic, or a Thomistic tendency, which tends to use reason, and uh, explores the world as good and making it better um, and doesn't write us off as totally sinful. Uh, you have to keep in mind, you know, this idea of transparency, uh, whether it's uh, an educational process and also can you check out of the system without a lot of rancor and manipulation and condemnation. So we'll leave it at that. Um, I recommend this, uh, the Catholic Church of History, uh, it's quite interesting uh, by Professor William R. Cook, and uh, you can get it through the great courses. Uh, it gives you a fair idea of Catholicism history, warts and all, as I said. Okay, thank you for listening.